Uh, yeah, so what I was kind of basically alluding at was, like, I think that if you remember things exactly as it happened, it would take away from the memory itself. So, like, with AI, like, for example, like, you know, like, robots, like, basically their brains are, like, recording stations. But I think they have, like, I guess I would imagine something as, you know, intelligent as what we've seen in, like, you know, like, pop culture of, like, how robots remember things would be they remember things exactly as it happened, right? Versus us as humans, where we kind of, like, you, even the person with the best memory does not remember every single detail because they're not mm-hmm. recording, right? Mm-hmm. They're kind of remembering a version of the story. So, like, my biggest fear would be, like, if we got to a society where, like, basically we, like, you know, like, AI were, like, I guess, you know, like, taken as seriously as humans, I think it would kind of, like, deteriorate certain things that are make things special for us, right? So, like, if you went to, like, a sporting event, you know, like, back in 2008 when, you know, the Giants – uh, Giants play the Patriots and Dave Tyree had that crazy catch where he literally caught the football on the side of his helmet. I remember the emotions I had when that happened. I remember them as being like epic. I was like, you know, going crazy. I wasn't at the all of a sudden I was watching it, you know, like watching from my home with my dad. But I remember like how I felt. So now I imagine there's something there to be like, no, you actually, when that happened, weren't that excited about it. But for whatever reason, you have this memory of like, it was epic. That would completely destroy a memory. It, it would be kind of like a like an AI having like a little printer and then it prints out like exact memory word for word and kind of like a video to be like do 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 and, and it, it would kind of spit like a Carfax and be like, you actually did not yeah, experience yeah. that that wasn't as dope as you thought like it actually was pretty subpar you should delete this from your memory bank like ah shit you know I feel like everyone would if they had an AI they would if they leave it at home so then they could kind of embellish their their memories for people who like who like to do that Dude, and that's, then, that's exactly what would happen we would start craving you know like the ability to embellish memories i think that's exactly what happened because that's kind of what you basically do anyway now because no one remembers anything exactly as it is so the parts that you don't remember what do you do you kind of make them up to a certain degree and if you had something that completely told you exactly what happened i don't think people would enjoy that be like ah oh, dude i rather i prefer my story of events you know yeah, I think I think like what we had previously said before we before we started recording, that I think people kind of enjoy the fact that they don't know, um, you know, they don't know exactly what what happened. I mean, some people, like you said before, do have really really good memories, but not everyone remembers every single thing. And then if you add this kind of like AI component into it, then you know you don't really worth the creativity you don't, it's yeah. it's gone. It's literally black and white. I think creativity goes away, man, because like at the end of the day, it's like, you know, like they say like lightning doesn't strike twice. I think mm-hmm. that basically means that like sometimes certain things, like like think about the last time you did something that completely even shocked yourself. You're like, I don't know why I did that. I don't know what was going on that like, you know, it caused me to do that. But if you had something that was like basically like, let's say like, you know, like they always talk about like the, the exact scenario that created like the Flash or in like, or Spider-Man, right? It was mm-hmm. a crazy turn of events. It's always like, Barry Allen was in a lab, you know, he was mixing all these chemicals together, and then all of a sudden, lightning just so happened to come through the, you know, the window, hit all these chemicals at once, and boom, it happened, right? That, you could, if you had something that completely recorded every single event and how that happened, for example, I think it would take away the specialness of, even though it's a fictional scenario, of it happening, right? Because you remember, I'm sure, like, you know, like, Barry Allen remembers a specific turn of events that transpired. But if he realistically saw what happened, a lightning bolt came from the fucking sky, broke through the fucking glass, exploded his lab. He almost got lit on fire and got imbued with the speed force powers. That is a less glamorous version of events, right? Mm. But you remember things a specific way. Same thing with Peter Parker. Peter Parker got bit by a radioactive spider that escaped from Oscorp, bit him on the hand. He technically was fucking sweating that he was going to die for like three days and then got, at the end of that third day, got his powers. That is a less glamorous version. The cool version he remembers is I got bit by the spider and then woke up with dope ass powers. I think sometimes not remembering everything is a, you know, it's a good, so I don't know. Like, I think that, I think technology should not evolve beyond the point of it takes away things from you. And I think that's where it's going to end up going. So did you, did you watch that, that Black Mirror episode I told you about yesterday? Yeah, I did. The, so for the ones that, you know, for the people that are listening, it's the season four, episode five, Metalhead. Um, And so those, 
I guess I don't know if it's really a spoiler. It's been out for a while. Well, basically, but, it's a spoiler, so I guess we might as well say spoiler warning. Okay, well, spoiler warning. Uh, so the, essentially, the dogs that are in that um, episode, they were influenced by the Boston Dynamic robots. And for those that don't know what the Boston Dynamics are, uh, you just go on YouTube and type in Boston Dynam- uh, Dynamics, and they have multiple um, different robots that they're working on. And the one that uh, that the Black Mirror episode had was called Big Dog. So that one is essentially is like a, like a uh, mechanical dog, and that's the one that just kind of runs as fast as it can. So that episode, it freaked me out because the fact that we... You know, it's based off something that's already real, and then you can kind of this kind of portrays of, like. Like, do you think is it like the worst case scenario is a possibility, or is this the idea like something like that could happen? Freak you out. I think it's more so the possibility. I mean, I don't really, I don't really have faith in how like AI will benefit us. Like, I know that it does benefit us more so than it does negatively right now, but that episode is kind of like a worst case scenario. Just imagine having that post-apocalyptic world where, yeah, you know, we have this AI. That would be bad, man. That's, that's the crazy thing about it, man. It's like, at the end of the day, it's like, I mean, the one common denominator in most of these, like, you know, like dystopian future shows that technology goes wrong is that like human beings get lazy and let, you know, these, you know, like, you know, leaps in technological advances, you know, they kind of like take over in the sense of like, we stop trying to do things ourselves. Like, you know, like, have you ever, have you ever noticed like things become, things go from like, all right, let's say for example, I want a piece, I want an item that makes doing a task a little bit simpler. Mm-hmm. It always starts with making it, doing, making it simpler, not doing the task itself. Like for example, like with GPS, GPS mm-hmm. was like a meant, it was a meant to be a step above reading a map. It was meant to tell you exactly where to go. So it'll just give you the instructions. And then we took it up a notch in the sense of like, now we have, we have a thing that literally tells you in 400 feet, take a right. At the next light, take a right. So now it's not telling you, it's not basically helping you go, you go to this destination. It's telling you exactly where to go. But it's now taking away things from you. It's taking away a skill set, you know? And I think that's the one common thing you notice on a lot of these shows. It's like whenever AI goes bad, it's always something that we should technically still be doing ourselves. Like, for example, cleaning your house. You don't need a ro- robot to clean your house. You want the robot to clean your house, but now it's taking away the ability for you to be motivated to clean a place you live in, you know? Mm-hmm. That's where it always goes south because now we get used to like, okay, the first time you do it, very rarely does it go bad, right? It's always like, ah, all right, well, now we did this. Now we, we start with the Zoom, the, what, are, what are they called? Roombas? The little like pod yeah, thing. Roombas. Mm-hmm. Now imagine you had a Roomba that like was maybe four feet tall. This Roomba now has hands. It can do the dishes. Not only can it vacuum the carpets, it can do your dishes. Now you're not doing that. So now it requires a little bit more of a skill set to do that. So now it's, it's slowly catching up to you. And all these horror, you know, you know, movies, it's always the AR surpasses our, our, passes our capabilities and intellect. That's where it goes south. That's the part that's scary to me. We can create, some, to create something that you can't control. Just that concept. Do you so, think how it's, like it's, think about the fact that like you can create something that goes from vacuuming your carpets to now it's holding you hostage with a fucking machine gun so before we start this i so i have a new dog and i the reason why i wanted a roomba uh is because he sheds a lot and um he hasn't shed that much right now but the fact that the roomba helps with the sweeping it's more so not to replace the cleaning but more so to assist with the cleaning which again that kind of you know not relying on it, but it makes the job a little bit easier. And I still haven't bought a Roomba yet, but I mean, I the Roomba would do the, it would technically do the job for you because yeah, no matter what, you can always you know sweep Levi's you know fur up. There's no mm-hmm. there's no amount of fur that is out of your capabilities of sweeping up. That's the trick because you're going to tell yourself like ah, I need this Roomba to do it because I can't do it by myself. It is tedious to do it by yourself. Mm-hmm. That's the trick then we create something to do it for us and then we stop doing that thing. And then we upgrade that said thing to do other things, the same pattern. Uh, this is inconvenient, I'm gonna have it help me do this and then it just takes over that task entirely. So you notice 
the object that is doing all these things for you is getting better and better, increasing, getting smarter and smarter. And the, the point, and then obviously in the Hollywood movies, it's like it turns into a fucking robot and then, you know, get I robot situation or, you know, even though if you, for those of you guys have not watched Ex Machina, if you haven't watched Ex Machina, that movie inadvertently becomes a horror movie because of how it ends and how it progresses to the ending. Because that movie does a good job convincing you this can fucking happen. Because even as I was watching, like I'm doing my best to kind of dodge around spoilers, but at the same time get people incentivized to watch it. It ends in a way where you're like, holy shit. If I were in that person's position, I would have done the same things to have the, what happens in the end happen. And that's a horror movie in itself. How old is this movie? Because I don't think I've seen it yet. Dude, I want to say it's three or four years old. Like, don't quote me on it. It's at least three years old. Hmm. It was an indie film. Like, it came out, was it Studio it's at A21? Like, they're the same studio, I believe, that did, like, Upgrade. And like, they uh-huh. do a lot of low-budget movies that end up being fucking massive. Because of, like, they put so much into story. They're one of the few studios that, like, prove that like a budget doesn't make a good film good writing and fucking creativity makes a good film hmm. but Machina, man, i watched that with my brother i remember my brother's a person that's not into like sci-fi stuff he really he really has a disdain for it because typically those are like slow building movies like the payoff is always in the end so if it's a long movie like for example like blade runner 2049 it's like three hours long but it rewards you if you last the three hours ex machina kind of follows the same formula where it's like it's a slow burn but if you make it towards the end of that burn when that fucking flame goes out and you see the shit that transpired, you're like, holy crap. Hmm. And it leaves you with the same kind of feeling that I, I, if you guys have watched Inception, that same feeling where you're like, damn, you're, you're still thinking about this stuff a year or two later. Damn. I'm going to have to add that to my, to my list of movies that I'll watch in about 10 years. No, dude, I'm telling you, you need to watch that like now because if you want to get more, if you were scared about that episode of Black Mirror, Ex Machina is going to have you shit in your pants. Yeah, I'd prefer not to shit my pants, but I no, might have to watch um, it. Got to see what you're made of. You got to defecate in your pants to see if you're about that life. So, you know, you're talking about how you'll have like a, a machine that kind of like washes laundry or washes dishes and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm alone in this, but I feel like I would want a machine that folds laundry just because I don't. Laundry is probably one of the worst things. And Dude, if I, I had one, the whole point is like, I honestly, I'm not shitting on the fact that like, I'm saying that like, Oh dude, I wouldn't want that. No, I'm saying the dangerous part is that like, it would make you, you're getting dumber. The thing is getting smarter. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm. That is the danger because it starts with something very mundane and easy, like washing, you know, folding your clothes. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, Oh, this is, this thing has made my life so convenient. This aspect, let me upgrade it to make my life more convenient in other aspects. But you are slowly losing the. I wouldn't say lose. It's not like you lose the ability to fold clothes, but you 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 lose the desire to do it. It becomes a task. There's certain things that aren't tasks. You know, like for example, mm-hmm. you remember when walking a distance was like a thing. Like if something was like a mile away, you're like, ah, that was walkable. Yeah. Not the mile away is a very walkable distance, but what changed the game? Ah, I'm gonna take a taxi or I take a scooter. I'm going to get there as conveniently as possible. Mm-hmm. But you can't walk there you can still walk there but now you lose the ability and the desire to go and do it because you have something that has made it easier to do so when i say it took something away it's taken your ability to deal with stuff and it's like almost like um actually if someone is a big advocate of like how human beings are slowly becoming more uh, less self-sufficient as joe rogan he talks about how our mod- the modern day human is a fucking pussy mm-hmm. Back in the day, you know, like with these, like, you know, like Neanderthals and all that stuff and Homo erectus and all those other things that came before Homo sapiens, they woke up every day having to fight for their fucking food. Every day was survival, quite literally. So they were, they were well equipped. They were very self-sufficient because every day they functioned like it was their last. Now, fast forward to 2020, motherfuckers are complaining about their internet co- connection being slow. You think the guy that's complaining about my phone is so slow is going to be a guy that can survive in the wilderness or have self-sufficient skills? No, probably not. Probably not, right? So that's going to be the same guy that's going to probably let his little Roomba get smart enough to the point where this thing is like human beings are no longer something we desire. Let's take over. Like, you know, like it would happen. I don't think it would happen in a way we would notice. Think about things like the Google Home or Amazon Alexa. Those are forms of AI. Whenever, like, I, I've had plenty of times when I used to have a Google Home, 
I've had a Google Home and I've had an Alexa. And I remember when I had a Google Home, there have been plenty of times where that thing I have told it like Google Home off, right? It was supposed to be off. And I'll say something random like, I'll be like, I'll be like playing video games, right? And I'll be like, yo, Brandon, da da da, have you heard this song? Da 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 da, right? And my Google Home be like, such, such and such song on Spotify is. I'm like, why is this thing? It's listening. Mm-hmm. So that basically, that is something that is going against a direct order I gave it. You know, I guess to say bluntly, an order, be off. Google Home off, listens, and then gave me an answer to something. That is fucking terrifying. But if you think about it, there oh, it would have to be always be listening because it it would always have to be ready for your command. You know? Exactly, exactly. So for even for me to be like Google on, it would have to be listening to hear that. So it's mm-hmm. never off. Yeah. That's- See, that's why that's why I don't. So I one of my friends bought me one for Christmas. I want to say, and at the time it it sounded awesome. I was like, hey, look, I can just not have to deal with music like in terms of having to actually scroll to it i can just be like hey what was it alexa hey alexa go uh play blah 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 but the more i thought about it i i don't need anything like that like that doesn't for me at least i use stuff for utility and how it benefits me and that doesn't really benefit me anyway in the sense of like why would i want someone else to just play my music i can just scroll through you know whatever i want to use and I mean, you're thinking of the song that I want. Standpoint: What happens when you get so accustomed to that thing doing said thing? Like you, like right now, you there's no, there's nothing that is as convenient as being able to be like, let's like let's say for example, like you know when you're running and you're like, oh man, I want to, you know, like I mean, I want to listen to this one song. It's like my my pump up song while I'm going on a jog, right? Imagine if there's something that like was so convenient as. Like, hey, you know, hey, I want to listen to Lincoln Park and automatically play, right? You just had to say it. You would eventually give in to having that, like having that little convenience take over. That's what I'm kind of alluding at. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah. It's, it's not about like, like, for example, right now, like, yeah, you want to scroll through, like you're willing to scroll through, you know, let's say hundreds of songs to get to that one song you like, right? Mm-hmm. That's because that's the most efficient way of doing something. Let's say there is something that has the perfect combination with efficiency and convenience. That's the dangerous part. That's where I think that that's where I think AI could take over. Because I think AI, every time you see it depicted in that very, you know, like dystopian future and human beings are addicted to technology, is that it's efficient and convenient. So therefore we don't feel the desire to do things, you know, the harder way or do things, you know, ourselves. What if we're what if we're boxing our our thoughts? And we're not looking at at the bigger picture in terms of how it's benefiting like elderly people, for instance, people who can't, who have like, you know, poor mobility um, or have poor functionality with their hands. Alexa would be great for them. How so? For instance, like, let's say you have like arthritis and you're not able to use your phone. um, But I don't know, you want to listen to some Frank Sinatra, whatever you want to do. So you're like, Hey Alexa, play Frank Sinatra. So instead of you, being in excruciating pain, you know, you have this device that helps you like an elderly man or woman, whatever it is, play music and be in a sense of, you know, satisfaction because they're before they weren't able to do that because they would have to physically use their hands, which were ex- in excruciating pain. So you're saying that like this thing now is, so, well, well, honestly, that's an interesting, that's an interesting standpoint, but I do think it's a different angle. Yeah. And it seems like you lost a skill. Like this elderly person is no longer able to do that. So mm-hmm. the technology is now giving him back that skill. Mm-hmm. So referring to something like you are able to do it yourself, you are now not going to do it as a result of having such an utter convenience. So this person, let's say for example, W amputee doesn't have arms. Now you get like you know those prosthetics, right? Technology being added to you. That is now giving you something because you're giving you something because you lost the ability to use your hands. Mm-hmm. Cause mm-hmm. You're not there. So the yeah. tech technology is now giving you back that ability. What I'm referring to is the guy that like has both his arms, but now wants to use like, what is that? Like that those claws, I've seen those little toy claws where you can like grab something from a distance. Mm-hmm. Like it's like, I, I, there's probably a better term for it. I forgot what it's called, but like they're literally like these little cheap ass toy claws where you hold the handle and it has a claw and you just squeeze it and it can grab something. Almost like, um, like one of those like machines you see at the arcades where you put a quarter in the claw comes down and it's like, you know, he just squeezes a toy and pulls it back up. Yeah, like the claw from Toy Story. 
Yeah, something like that. But they have the other ones where it's literally like a handle where you can just do that. And it's usually you see like fucking, you know, like incredibly overweight fat people doing shit like that. Like they're dr- rolling through Walmart and they're like segways, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, I can't reach that shit. So they grab up the claw and they grab it. That thing. Is it like a pooper scooper, but for, for I guess children? for, yeah, you have to describe it. It's similar to a pooper scooper, but it's <laughs> meant to grab shit, right? But what I'm saying is something like that, right? That person still has full capability of their arms, so therefore they can still do that thing. Mm-hmm. But this now piece of, you know, technology, no matter, how, no matter how simple it is, is making that task that they don't want to do simpler. So now they're getting so lazy to the point that now that thing is taking away something from them because now they're not going to do it because of the convenience of using this other thing. To me, that's different than someone that does not have their arms and they now get prosthetics or like you're saying with the music example, like, you know, like doesn't know how to, doesn't have the ability to, you know, like do it themselves. And then now this thing is helping them because it's giving them back something they lost. Mm-hmm. So I, so I kind of am guilty of that whole being able to do it, but you are not relying, I guess. Well, yes. Yeah, it is kind of like relying on AI to help. Cause there was this thing that um, I had given one of my friends for Christmas. It was a, I think it's called the Wemo. Sounds like Weibo. So shout out to Weebs, but Wemo. So it's like a, um, you put it into a, I want to say it's like a socket, like a regular socket that you place like your iPhone charger or whatever. And um, you can connect it with your, um, with your phone. And so you can use it for multiple things. Like for instance, I wanted to use it on my, when I had a Keurig, I was going to try to set it up with my Keurig. So that way in the morning, right, 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 like right when I get up, I can press a button and it'll start making my coffee. Okay. Or I wanted it, you know, I wanted these like cool ass lights. Like it enhanced as something that you could do yourself. It was a convenience on top of something that tech was already a convenience. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. So, so that would be convenience, but, there was another example I wanted. I wanted to have um, like these like lights that you can change different colors based on whatever, you know, that you have like a pinwheel on your phone. And then from there you can change like, you know, if I wanted like a blue light, I can change it to blue. Or if I wanted to change it to like a green light, it would do it. Yeah, I don't but think more. there's anything wrong with that, man. I think, I think um, like that's not, to me, that's not like something that's detrimental, man. That's mm-hmm. just something that's cool as fuck. There's a difference, you know, like, don't get me wrong. I think like, you know, our viewers are probably going to sit there and think, or our listeners are going to probably think like, oh man, this guy's just hating on tech. I'm like, nah, not at all. There are certain mm-hmm. things I fucking love as well too. Like I love the fact that like I can sit here and like, if, like even for example, like I can sit here and be on my phone. Like I can sit here and be on the phone with you, but at the same time I can be controlling one of my characters on my PS4, you know, mm-hmm. that's a technology mm-hmm. advance. Like that's pretty cool. You know, that's not yeah. taking it away from me. I think that like it's a double-edged sword. It's like it's like it's like we always described. It's like it's Pandora's box. Mm-hmm. It has a, it is equally as beneficial as it is as it is harmful. But it's just because of human nature. I think human beings have a tendency to turn something that technically could be used for good. You know, I guess I guess the word evil is a strong word to use, but I use it for malicious purposes, right? It's like the internet. The internet is not right. It's not good or bad. It's just how you use it. I think AI and technology applies in a very similar fashion. It's just how you use it. But I think based off our track record, I'm scared about it because I don't trust that we as a species will use it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. What do you think will be like the next big AI contribution? I think we're going to get, I think it's going to be like an extreme upgrade of like, the Google home concept or the Amazon Alexa where that thing can blatantly talk to you. Like, it's not like it's responding to command. It's thinking, as I say, something like the same way you and I are talking, it will be a similar exchange of words. I think that is going to be the next thing, because if you think about what the internet is, the internet, I look at the internet as like a brain, right? I like my brain and your brain and the human brain, right? Stores things. So when we talk, we're always pulling from this database, right? Mm-hmm. The internet is a, an extreme infinite version of that so if you have an object or some sort of piece of technology that draws its responses and how it functions from an infinite database that thing technically should just be ridiculously intelligent right so i think that's going to be the next step because i think right now the google home and alexa and all those things even like your cell phone it draws from this resource in a very limited way 
it's almost like the kind of it's almost like you know i guess they're, they're describing it like a, like an anime like when deku has like you know deku for you my hero academia fans out there he pulls his power from what the one for all quirk right mm-hmm. he technically had that quirk is technically an infinite resource of power but he can only use what 20 percent of it so i describe yeah, it the 20%. same way as like you know like the alexa and the google home it has an infinite source of knowledge aka the internet you can only right now it's only capable of drawing x amount of that you know like i guess you can say like power mm-hmm. so i think the next step would be to create something that uh, create a device that could basically just utilize that utilize you know the internet or utilize this database to its maximum ability and that's when we get into like the scary part of like what we talk about with like technology taking over so let's say that came in the form of a robot that had access to the internet so technically that robot if it could utilize the internet in the same way that we utilize our brains, that would be fucking terrifying. <laughs> you know, like that, the, like, there, you could be being manipulated and you wouldn't even fucking know. That's how crazy I think. Like, I think the internet is like the ultimate source of information. Infinite. The infinite is like the universe. The internet is like the universe. It's always expanding. Every second, something is being added to this database. So now imagine you have something that draws its, you know, source of power from that. Our brains have limited space. Even the smartest person on the planet has a limit to how smart they can be because there's a limited amount of space, right? If you have something that's drawn from an infinite reservoir, that thing could just constantly get smarter and smarter and smarter. And then we will be out here. We'll end up in an iRobot situation, bro. Mm. So I feel like we, like we, we already use kind of AI with like higher learning, like with the sense of like, remember that uh, they use like the AI to help try to beat that like world renowned chess player. Oh yeah. Like stuff like that. Just being like two or three steps ahead or I don't know, probably like a hundred steps ahead, I guess with AI, just making sure that they know exactly what that chess player will, will do and kind of counteract it. So we already have like notions of, of AI thinking ahead. And so when you, I guess, you know, when we, when we see AI already having that, uh, prediction as well as being able to have like a I think AI what it lacks right now is human, the, the thing that we have as a benefit as being human beings is that we can improvise we can we can we can be going down a logical path and then course correct in, in an instant moment I think that's the biggest advantage we have it's like for, so for example if, I think when it comes to like I mean like granted I am by any means I am no you know, mathematician or scientist, engineer, and all that stuff. But the way I look at like, you know, robots and stuff like that, I think they have a logical path from point A to point B to them is a very straight line, right? Mm-hmm. It may be the most efficient straight line, but it's a straight path. I think what separates humans from technology or, you know, like, you know, robots and stuff like that is that like, we can be like, okay, we were going to do this, but all of a sudden like do like, you know, like kind of like a U-turn and pull an audible and still, you know, come up with the same result or come up with a better result. But that also defies logic. I think when you have someone that's thoroughly logic based, it has a weakness because it's always going to look at point A to point B. It's not going to look at any of the variables in creative ways. So that's the only thing we have going right now. But we will lose that if we're sitting here relying on all these very, you know, like convenient things. So there was this this quote that I saw. I think it was maybe four or five months ago, and. You know how you, how you were talking about how the internet is like a vast, infinite, um, like database. Yeah. And so they like kind of like if there was an AI that pulled from that database, the quote was that data is the twenty first century oil. Do you agree with that? So basically, if I'm understanding it correctly, like de- like relating it to oil, meaning it's it's a commodity. It's a hot commodity. That- yeah. It's a- that is more valuable than we think it is yeah like a like data with I would, essentially no, I, i'm gonna say yes but i'm not also understanding why i'm saying yes because i don't think i'm intelligent enough to understand like yeah. i've always seen like how for example like amazon facebook instagram all these companies they sell our data and they like that's the i would assume the, the reason why there are laws around what you can sell and what you can show people in terms of personal data and stuff like that is limited because it's a resource. It's a very, you know, it's a very valuable resource. 
I don't have a degree nor the brain capacity to understand why. Like I'm the same person that like when Edward Snowden, you know, like was like, the government is listening to you all the fucking time. I'm like, fuck it, I don't care. But if this guy is willing to be a martyr for this thing, there's probably a good reason why. And this guy is 20 times smarter than I am. So like, mm-hmm. I understand there's some degree of value to it, but I just don't understand why. I really don't. But also the, maybe it's just because of the lifestyle I live. I don't know if I'm a person, I don't, I'm not basically not qualified to answer it because I don't get it. I don't care what, like I, I look at things in terms of like legal and illegal. That's just the way I look at things. Mm-hmm. So even if I decide to do something illegal, I'm like, I'm deciding to break the fucking rules. Yeah, I don't cautiously it. doing it. I'm cautiously doing it and I'm doing it with the understanding that like, I just don't care. But in terms of like people, like the only reason why I don't want, I would not want to, if I'm doing something illegal, I would not want someone to know is because of adverse actions that could be taken against me. But I'm not looking at it from the standpoint of like, you know, it's, you know, if I sell someone's data, you know, like I make X amount of money, I wouldn't even know. How, if you give me like the social security numbers of everyone in this country, I would not know how to make money off of it. There's some people right now that could be like, be, I know how to be a billionaire by tomorrow with those numbers. I don't fucking know. I feel like so, if, you had, yeah. if you had people's social security number, all you have to do is send an email to every single person. Just make up a random, not, not make up, but just type in a random email and be like, hey, I'm a Nigerian prince that has your social, social security. That would totally work, man. Honestly, some ran, I don't know. Has that ever been done before? Like some African prince emailed millions of people. <laughs> And then be like, hey, I, I guarantee you there's at least maybe, I don't say like 5% that want to help that African prince. Dude, like honestly, not to fucking insult. Well, actually, I do mean to insult people. How fucking dumb do you have to be to believe that? I don't get, that's a special kind of stupid. When people are like, that, when did that come out? Was it like the early 2000s where like, that was like the biggest scam? Like there's some Nigerian prince that would send you an email saying that like, I need X amount of dollars because I'm in like, what, I'm in jail or I'm in some bad financial situation. But the second I get out of it, I'll give you, I'll give you your money back. Like, like no, it, no, it wasn't even your money back. It would be, it'd be like 10 times your money back. Like who believes that? Like who, like how are you smart enough to be like, I have this amount of money to give, but dumb enough to believe that that's not a scam. I don't get it. Like, that's a literal brain error I have. I'm like, I don't get, even if it's like 3% of the world's total population, those, that 3%, what the fuck were you thinking? Well, you know know? that, you know who would not make that mistake? An AI. (laughs) Well, if it got hacked, probably. Yeah, I don't think those uh, Nigerian princes, they, uh, I don't think they are that smart. Probably not, man. I'm probably not. I don't know, man. But I hold out hope that a Nigerian prince actually is a man of his word. But you know, ever since I sent that ten thousand dollars, I never got it back. So I'm kind of disappointed. This is kind of like, um, like the episode of the the Office. You remember uh, Michael Scott's Tots? Dude, I never watched the Office. Dude, I'm like, I, I, for some reason, dude, I I I know actually I know exactly why I never watched the Office because I was a Parks and Rec fan. So I think we may or may not be ending this podcast. I think all the listeners are going to. Dude, honestly, like you know, let's just cancel the whole thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's the same. It's the same thing, man. It's back in the day when you had to choose between one side or the other. It's like, are you PS? Are you PlayStation? Are you Xbox, bro? You no. Know, are you fucking Gatorade? Or are you Powerade, dog? Are you hip hop? Are you rock and roll, motherfucker? Like it was the same thing. In the office. Are you the office or Parks and Rec? Dude, I got into Parks and Recreation because I worked for the government. Mm. that's the reason why so like i understand the jokes to me like were fucking hilarious because that's shit that actually is fucking true to me Mm -hmm. so the office like the office was innovative in the sense to me i'm like that weird pov angle where it's like they started that whole like you know something crazy would happen and then you see michael scott sitting there like well i don't know why dwight threw a piece of lasagna out the window but that whole weird thing they used to do that i appreciate the fact they started that but for whatever reason man i was never the biggest office guy so I guess there's no fault in, in not watching it, but there is. But I guess the question is, would you be willing and would you be open to watching it? I Honestly, I've watched enough of it from these clips and all that stuff to get the premise of it. Like, I would watch it, but mm-hmm. I don't think it'd be as funny. I don't think if you're going to sell me on it being as epic as some people think it is, mm-hmm. like, it's already too late for me because I've seen too much of it. You know, like I've seen Michael Scott quoted about six million times at this point, you know, mm-hmm. and even st- and to, to put it like put it this way. The office is so old to me now that like 
even Steve Carell now is like he's like I don't even consider him a comedic actor anymore. He's like in thrillers and stuff like now. So I'm like that Steve Carell that was in that show. I'm like that's even the Steve Steve Carell we see now. Speaking of Steve Carell, have you seen like a recent picture of him? He's like a dude. He's like dude, a stud now. Dude, yeah, dude, dude, Steve Carell became a fucking badass and fucking. Did you ever watch um Crazy Stupid Love with Ryan Gosling? No. Mm-mm. I think what happened was some of Ryan Gosling's DNA like spilled into Steve Carell's like shot or something that he was drinking in that movie, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden he became a fucking stud because yeah, Steve Carell, man, like dude, like I mean, it's you know going back to that whole hetero flexibility now. Dude, if if I were, if I was a dude out there, and I'm I'm gonna pound an A list celebrities. Steve Carell might be on the list, dude. What's that? What is that term? A silver fox? Is that what you call it? Yeah, like yeah, someone who's like fox, old, like an old, old dude that still yeah. looks good. Yeah. yeah, Steve Carell's on there now, dude. Like, cause, but it came out of nowhere. That's the wild thing about it. The last movie that I saw with him was, I want to say, Forty Year Old Virgin. So that's like the most quote recent. Yeah. Thing that I've seen him in. And you didn't watch any Steve Carell shit at all, dude. Like, the last movie I saw of Steve Carell might have been that, was it? He was like the, he was, there was this wrestling movie that came up, him and Channing Tatum. Was, was it called Foxhound or Fox something? Mm. Where he it was based off like a true story where he was like an ab- abusive wrestling coach mm-hmm. and ended up like going to jail or some shit for like murder. It was like a fucking wild story. Mm. But, like, that was the last time I saw Steve Carell, like, most recent time. And then he did like an indie movie before that. Like one of my actual favorite indie movies called, uh, was it like, it was this movie where he was like, what was it called? It was it the last, it was something about summer. It was like last Kings, of, it wasn't last Kings of summer, but it was some, no, it's called the way, way back. That, that's what it was called. And he played like this douchebag stepfather for the, for the main character. So basically the main kid was like going, it had a, it was one of the few times that Kristen Stewart, the twilight actress showed emotion in a movie. Mm-hmm. So basically, the kid like went to like work at the summer park for like um for a summer. It's one of those like coming of age stories and all that stuff. But Steve Carell paid played the stepfather to this kid, and he was a complete douchebag. But he was the same dude. You're like, yo, you believe that Steve Carell could pull all the ass? Like he was he was no longer goofy fucking Steve Carell. He was like you're fucking. Granted, he was a fucking dickhead in that movie. But that's when I realized, like, yo, Steve Carell is no longer a fucking goofball anymore. This dude mm-hmm. is out there. That, Steve Crow has become the guy that you don't leave your mom around anymore. He may fuck your mom. Like, he's that guy now. He's the, the, the MILF hunter? Dude, he's beyond it. Steve Crow might be a George Clooney now. Well, you got to be careful. This oh, guy's damn. too smooth. That's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a pretty high praise. It is, man. I'm telling you, bro. I, I would not trust it. It's not like he would intentionally do it. He just is almost getting to the point of, like, good-looking, funny, wealthy, put together. I'm like... You know what, Steve? I'm going to need you to take. A, we're going to do the whole social distancing thing. Except you stay away from my girl. <laughs> you know, he's become that guy now. Uh, speaking of Steve Carell, did you see that he has a? Um, he did an episode with uh, John Krasinski on YouTube. That uh, Good News, what was it called? Like Good News Network? No, I never heard of it. Let me go look it up real quick. But he, um, John Krasinski, made like a YouTube channel. Um, and it is called Some Good News. And he has a few like episodes out. I think it has seven episodes. And the very first episode that he has, I like guess, spoiler spoiler alert, um, he has uh, Steve Carell on it. And I'm not sure. I haven't really watched. I just watched little segments of it because I don't, I guess I don't really want to watch it, but I kind of do now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, he, uh, John Krasinski has like a YouTube channel now, and I guess he talks about the good news that's not portrayed and it's more so of, you know, the other side of the news that we don't see. Oh, uh, more like, you know, now, cause in the sense of like news has kind of become almost like reality TV, mm-hmm. whatever, the only thing that's portrayed, put out there is more of the breaking, more of like the breaking stories, anything that seems dramatic. Yeah. And like I said before, this is, I've only seen like maybe 20 seconds of a video so if that is not the premise of some good news then don't crucify me yeah, but i think no. i think that's what it is could be could be i mean like i mean it sounds like an interesting topic because i i have been thinking about that lately it's like actual news has become more like it's not even like i don't feel like i learn anything from news anymore mm-hmm. i feel like nowadays the only thing it's a very it's a very funneled kind of way of looking at stuff these mm-hmm. 
where pretty much it's almost focused on like what is it going to actually attract people to a podcast, you know? Mm-hmm. Maybe not to a podcast, I mean, sorry, to a um, news, the news uh, outlet thing. And I think the only thing that's kind of like tricky about it is like what distinguishes, what, like what's different between news now and before? I think that whatever, people, I feel like it's whatever grabs the attention, whatever is like clickbaity. Yeah, now the, the intention is no longer to actually educate you. It's more like just to hold your interest for ratings so they don't get canceled, you know, or get, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And that, I mean, it's kind of a sad thing. Yeah, I feel like that, that, um, that topic is definitely mm-hmm. like a one that we can kind of delve into a little bit later. Like that's, uh, that's a really, really big topic I feel like we can dive into. Yeah, for sure, man. Definitely for sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, the, but the interest, you know, I've been doing that. I think, you know, one thing I've, I've noticed nowadays is kind of like on a side tangent. A side tangent. Mm-hmm. Do you think there's any, all right, so do you think there's any correlation between what we see on the news and basically this stuff kind of trying to influence us for a bigger agenda? Uh, what do you mean? In the sense of like, for example, have you noticed like there's some people like with this whole coronavirus thing, for example, there's the whole thing of like basically, you know, it's trying to cause like a massive panic, right? Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, you hear some people saying they're like, oh, it's not actually that bad. It's like, who are we to believe? Because these are educated people actually saying this, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like we, like, like what we had previously mentioned before and behind like the whole recording, like I don't think a lot of people know exactly about this virus. And I think that we're just whatever small information that they can get, they run with it and they post it. And that's, that's the news, you know? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's the interesting thing because with the whole coronavirus thing now, it's like, you know how like people have like now, even like movie theaters now being shut down and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, now even things that are seen that seen as a form of entertainment are now suffering. Like even me, like for example, like I was thoroughly excited to see Demon Slayer in theaters. Mm. But now it kind of seems like I don't know, like is that gonna affect like even production of things like for example like anime? Like you know, like the biggest thing is like whenever sees like when every season ends, what they have to do is they have to go back to like the studio and they have to literally draw the next season. So now with this whole pandemic going down, like does that mean that like they pretty much for the foreseeable future, like things like you know like i don't know like seasons of new shows you know coming out with anime or cartoons are going to be delayed now indefinitely or they're going to have to like almost plan ahead just in case something like the coronavirus happens again see i don't for me at least i don't really understand how like production wise in terms of like anime like i don't feel like i don't see how that would be affected by the coronavirus like Mm i i maybe i'm not understanding how like i feel like you could I don't know, maybe, like, could you not work on it at home and then kind of send it off? Or are you worried about like... I, I guess technically you could, but I know like sometimes like there's some shows that they're on. Like I think some of like the bigger animes, for example, like they, like for example, like My Hero Academia, like pretty much the biggest, you know, anime out right now. I think they, you know, like before that current season that's, uh, you know, like playing ends, they already at least have that next season done. But sometimes, like, for example, you get something like One Punch Man. Like, the gap between One Punch Man season one and season two was two and a half years because the studio did not expect the actual anime to be that popular. Even though, like, it had gone from being, like, a webcomic to, like, you know, a popular manga mm-hmm. and eventually an anime, they, still there's always that big, you know, like, chance of, like, your anime adaptation may not be successful. So sometimes, because once you start animating it, you're spending the money, right? So whether mm-hmm. it's successful or not, the money's already spent. So I think sometimes some of the studios hold off to see, okay, how well it does. And then if it does well, then, okay, like now let's start production season two. Mm-hmm. I guess the, now, I guess the issue now is corona, the whole, this whole coronavirus pandemic has shown is that like, if you do that now, you know, we can't have people that are all together. Right. So let's say for, for mm-hmm. example, my academia season five coming out, if they haven't done season five right now, I mean, it's going to be pretty tricky. To now be like, okay, you're gonna have to get a bunch of people to animate a bunch of stuff, and then a bunch of people to like send it to the editors. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes stuff. sense. That yeah. process now is exponentially longer. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering now if like things are gonna change permanently. Yeah, so I'm gonna need uh, the coronavirus to be kind of fixed because I'm patiently waiting for the Demon Slayer movie because I don't know I. I probably should read the manga. 
um, but I'm too. There's, I, I don't know. The, the chapters are pretty, pretty short, and I probably could read it. But I, this kind of goes back to the whole convenience. Like, mm, if there was an audiobook, I probably would do that, and then like follow along with it on the manga. You know? Yeah, I, I definitely get you, man. It's like it's it's tricky. But the thing about like you and these audiobooks, bro. You know, I'm always gonna fight you on these audiobooks. I feel like it takes away the excitement. You know? See, like once I once we get up to like maybe five or six like chapters that I need to read, then, then I'm good. But if I have to read like 150 chapters, which probably shouldn't take that long, but it's just, I think it's the fact that I have to like go in there and like dedicate what, eight hours to read all those. Like, I don't know. To me, that's, it's not, not a waste of time, but it's just like, well, there goes my Saturday, you know? True. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I guess it goes back to that old school mind- mentality I have. Where it's like, there's some things that just should not be affected by goddamn technology. Like if I, if I, like I sit there and I, when I'm, whenever I'm reading, like, for example, like reading a man, like even if it's cruelly drawn, not the best drawn, I'm still visualizing it, visualizing it in my head. But like when you read, like when you listen to an audiobook and it's telling you everything, it's like it's taking away that creative part of your brain that has to put in those details, you know? Mm-hmm. Like when you feel like when you're reading a manga and like you see a sword like swing and you literally see like in bubble letters like swoosh, mm-hmm. that sound effect is in your head versus somebody in your headphones being like, and swoosh. swung his blade and swoosh, it sliced through the demon. It's like, dude, do that in your head. You know, like mm-hmm. that's the whole fun in it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I guess there's certain things that I don't know. Like I, I hope don't go away, but at the same time, that's the reason why I'm such a big fan of anime because anime is to me, the actual visual adaptation of that part of my head. Like the, all, most of my favorite animes, ironically enough are awesome to me because the anime is as awesome as what I've been visualizing in my head when reading the manga. Mm-hmm. Like whenever, like whenever, like I've read, um, I think the biggest one, the one that like surprised me that it was just as good, man, actually was my hero academia. Cause my hero academia is very well drawn. Even though I don't read the manga, I have read like seen like panels. Which and you stuff should like read it by the way. Dude, I'm still fighting it, man. I'm still fighting it because I, I still enjoy that tingly feeling when I'm thoroughly sh- surprised. Like going back to that last episode, you know, the season finale, the season four of. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't want to. I mean, I guess I should put up a spoiler, you know, spoiler warning. With what transpires, what Endeavor does, I am thoroughly excited and happy at, that I saw it happen for the first time, visually on the anime versus the manga. Not that it makes it any less epic, but I do think that shock factor enhance my experience seeing things that seeing the things that happen see i'm i so i think i'm gonna fight you with this one so i for me at least whenever i read something it's more so so i understand the the basics of what's going on so then when i see it in an anime it's i can actually enjoy the moment and you know the surrounding things around it because if i were to watch it for the first time like not experience anything then it's I would have to, you know, just, I would be solely focused on that one thing, but being, you know, aware of whatever, like whatever is going around that moment and that event, it frees me up to do that. So do you think that bait more or less than you're saying, but like if too many random things you did not expect are happening, I happen at once, you don't, you can't focus because you put too much attention to like, Oh shit, that's happening. Oh, oh shit, that's happening. But if you know, things are coming up, you're more able to kind of, I guess, organize how you look at things. Is that, is that? Yeah. And I guess you could argue that you could always rewatch it, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe it, you're, it's getting less and less pleasurable because you're, you you now know what's coming. You now actually know what's coming. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It might be part of the reason that, you know, I look for spoilers. And so I read, read ahead. So, mm-hmm. so you know, that way I kind of know exactly what's going on because you know, I'm kind of like a spoiler junkie. So if I could find out anything and anything that pertains to something, I will read up on it and it doesn't ruin it for me. It, if anything, it makes it more exciting. That statement, for me. That statement almost gave me cancer. Like I literally don't get how you do that, man. I just like the excitement. I like being, sh- I like getting a physical reaction in my body to shock. It's almost like the, it's almost like, for example, 
I'm, at this point, if you guys haven't seen Avengers Endgame, then go fuck yourself. I'm about to spoil it. So then, the end part where literally Cap is standing there, and you think, like, all right, Cap has to take on fucking Thanos. Thanos has just been whooping everybody's ass for the better half of a fucking movie. And then the portals open, and you see all those guys come out. You know, everyone that, you know, like, had been previously, you know, this dusted comes back. Mm-hmm. If I had known that was happening, it would have still been epic. But I would not have been almost, like, fucking shocked the way I was. Dude, I got full body chills when that happened in the theater. Like, it was just, like, it was a physical reaction to the shock and excitement. I don't think you get, I think you're depriving yourself of that when you know it's coming. I don't know. I guess it, I guess it kind of depends. Knowing. I guess it kind of depends on what it is, but for the most part, that doesn't, that doesn't mean, no, if anything, that makes me more excited. Like for instance, so, you know, just to wrap this up, but before it was, what was it? I want to say it was end game. The first part. Yeah, it was the first part. I was in, france at the time i was like celebrating something and i somehow found like a a link to like a shitty 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 quality of endgame part one and i watched it and that is the most disrespectful shit i've ever heard of These, this motherfucker watched endgame on bootleg quality you know what on my on phone if that makes any sense <laughs> No, it's just like I wanted to watch it because I wanted to know what happened. So then I actually don't know if I watched it in theaters. Now I think about it. No, maybe not. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Do you know what, dude? I, honestly, dude, that hurts a little bit. I don't, I don't know how you can. That is a once in a lifetime moment. You just dwindle down to a bootleg DVD copy. Does it, does it make it any worse if it was like a Pornhub link? I think that, it was that on actually makes it better. I'm not gonna lie to you. That makes that makes it more impressive. Oh, that's okay. Like a random find. That's like a good thing. Yeah, I I'm pretty good at like finding links for for movies. I don't know how I do it, but I <laughs> you, I find hey, it. Hey yeah, guys, you ever been trying to beat your dick and you accidentally watch two hours of Mission Impossible Four? <laughs> this guy has. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's it hits different. I don't know. Just because I know exactly what's gonna happen. It, I don't know. It's exciting for me. You know. Yeah, I feel it, man. Well, on that note, guys, I guess you guys take the time to digest all that you heard. Well, are we just fucking idiots, or do you guys agree with some of us? Let us know. And, uh, you know, I I guess I kind of want to drop one anime that we're watching right now. You want to do that? Yeah, let's drop one. Yeah, one. Let's let's do one random find. It can be something that's, like, new, old, Mm -hmm. or something that's, like, a hidden gem. So I am watching right now with my wife, uh, Tower of God. And... um, Shout out to uh, our boy Vince. He put it, he put me on that. Um, without really spoiling it, I don't really know exactly what's going on, so I can't spoil it. <laughs> can't spoil it because you don't know what you're saying. Yeah. So, but it's I don't know. I like it so far. I mean, there's only three or four episodes out, so you know, maybe in a future episode we can kind of update it. But that's what I'm watching right now. Right now, I'm not actually currently watching any new anime, but I am reading a fuck ton of new manga. So. My recommendation to all you guys that are still out there reading books and not like John's ass fucking listening to on Kindle, well, No Guns Life is a pretty pretty good recommendation. It's like a weird cyberpunk slash futuristic kind of manga where pretty much the premise is like these, there's this big war that transpired and, this, and to win this war, there's these things called extends that are created. So basically it was human beings that were enhanced. So the main character, his name is, uh, uh, his name is Juzo. Inyo Juzo. I'm probably butchering his name, but you know, I don't speak Japanese and don't sound cool when I'm speaking it so but um more or less this guy has a literal revolver for a fucking head Mm -hmm. I might exaggerate so think about a fucking old school revolver that is his head and he can shoot both out of his face and also he has a a revolver built into his hand and it's a pretty cool concept where he's like this um detective guy and he pretty much like you know solves cases and you know like beats the shit out of people that are like giving these uh group of people called extends you know, like problems and extends are now like a part of the human populace that have been enhanced. So it's a very weird kind of manga, but like, I'll give it a shot. If you guys are into like, you know, interesting art and, you know, just kind of like weird concepts. I mean, I'll give it, you know, give it my recommendation. Sounds good. All right. Well, bye everyone. All right, later.